Okay, let's do it. Hey, welcome to Life After Addiction and Indictment. Today, I've got a fabulous guest. It's a, it's a, I want to say a young man because he's quite a bit younger than myself, but just an incredible guy, a phenomenal entrepreneur, and actually the guy that inspired me to get my podcast rocking and rolling. And so I just want to welcome Zach Babcock to the show today. Yo, Steve, man, dude, I'm uh, super excited here to be here with you. Super honored to be on your show. Uh, really cool how we met the first time uh, out Idaho. That was Idaho, right? It was uh, Iowa. Iowa. Yeah, of all places, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, it's just been pretty awesome ever since, man. So I'm glad to be here. I appreciate it. I'll never forget it. I, was, I think we we're on a break when you came rolling into the hotel and we happened to meet right at the elevator. I was running up to my room to get something and and, uh, you know, I could just tell you were a cool dude. You took the time to chat. You listened. And, you know, a lot of times guys will just, they're in a hurry and they don't really pay attention and just kind of surface chat, you know, the high. And, but, uh, you know, that, that really, that, I, that caught my attention because that's not really typical. And uh, I sense you were just a genuine dude and, and a great guy. And uh, the more I got to know you, obviously that was true. So yeah, let's, let's do this, man. So you know, let's talk a little bit about kind of your story and kind of what you had been through. Um, you know, you've got a fantastic podcast. It's top of the list for entrepreneurship, underdog empowerment that, uh, you know, really inspires me. I listen to it, you know, several times a week. Um, but yeah, let's give the listeners a little insight of kind of your background and then, you know, what had you start your podcast and then what has it done for you and your family and, and how, you know, you've impacted thousands of people, you know, if not tens of thousands of people. Right on, man. Uh, yeah, man, for sure. I'll, I'll do, I'll give the cliff notes version yeah, because <laughs> it's a long story, but, uh, if you want to unpack anything else, we can always do that Absolutely. as well. But, uh, yeah, dude. Uh, I, uh, grew up in Ferguson, Missouri. Uh, didn't have a dad. My dad died when I was seven. Uh, my mom never remarried after that. Um, and I spent a large chunk of my uh, adolescence in and out of juveniles, detentions, boys' homes, you name it. Uh, Are you the I only was, boy or how many? You had siblings. Yeah, I had. You were uh, the my, only son? Yeah, I had my That's sister. Right. She was. Uh, You'll she talk was about right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it was just wild, man. I, I was just trying to do stuff to to fit in and be accepted uh, and didn't have any chief aim in life. And uh, by the time I was uh, 18, I ended up going away on a, on a five year or seven year sentence for five years flat or five years total. I did four years flat the first time, got out for about two years. And then I went back 20 days from my twin sons were born. And um, that right there, Steve, that was it, man. Uh, I know you could relate, man. I know you're really big into family and uh, you know, Absolutely. you got your boys that you're always, always loving up on. Uh, same here, man. Like that was it for me. I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't keep going. So I made a decision to head in the direction that I'm heading in now. And, uh, you know, a lot's happened since six years since that happened, but here we are, we're, uh, we're jamming out here today. When you, you know, my podcast is life after addiction and diamond. My, my, uh, situation was a federal and, you know, a white collar deal. I believe yours was drug wasn't related. Um, but you had something, you know, so I was addicted to opiates for, you know, 14 years, but you had something happen while you're in prison with your sister. Isn't that right? That really kind of hit, hit you hard. Yeah, man. Uh, the first time, uh, when I did the four years flat, um, I was about two years into it and then she died from a heroin overdose. My mom found her dead on the floor in the bathroom. She had to break into the bathroom with a screwdriver and then found her dead on the floor with a needle in her arm. Um, uh -huh. uh, yeah, and I was in I was in the hole at that time because uh, I'd gotten in trouble for getting tattoos, and I was doing a sixty day sentence down in the hole, which is a prison inside of the prison, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, that's no fun. No, not at all. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, man, that 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 situation had taught me a lot, you know, and it it, it really just uh showed me that you know no matter what happens to you in life, there's gonna be some shit that you can't control, but you always can control how you choose to respond to it. Uh, and that's been, uh, you know, a that's great amazing. lesson that's helped yeah, pay a lot of dividends over the years. Yeah, because I remember hearing you talk a little bit about that. And that, you know, it's, I think from what I remember, it really hurt you. You weren't there to support and be there for your mom, if I remember right. And, you know, and then, you know, as you mentioned earlier, the fact that you had your twin sons and, 
And that's really what I think inspired you and really, for lack of a better, I don't like to use this word, you know, just woke you up. But that's it sounds like that's what really just, you know, got to you and made you really just look at life and get a different perspective that maybe you just hadn't had, you know. And I think from watching you from, you know, when I met you and even a little bit prior to that, as you've talked to me and let me know a little bit more of your story, you know, you, you just shifted your mindset and you've just got, I mean, dude, you're the ultimate example of just setting the goal that you want and what you want out of life and going after it with blinders on. I mean, you've accomplished so much. It's incredible. I mean, and you're, you're an inspiration to me and I know thousands and thousands of other people. Um, so as you started your podcast, you know, what, you know, what was your goal originally with it? If it's anything different than what it is now? I mean, obviously things evolve and, and you, you know, get bigger, you know, visions and, and, and I know that knowing you, you know, you're trying to make the biggest impact possible and you're continuing to, I, I guess, set that goal of how you can really make a bigger impact on more people. And, you know, you're doing some big things with the prisons and that uh, my experience is that ain't easy to make happen. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, no, I appreciate, thank you uh, for the kind words for sure, man. And uh, yeah, I appreciate that. And uh, you bet. yeah, man, um, dude, uh, you know, it, it, it is true, man. It's weird. It's like, as you grow and evolve, so do your visions. And so do, you know, your, your, your core values in some instances, like my, like I've added new core values recently, just because I've been growing and evolving or whatnot. But, uh, um, yeah, man, what started it, dude, to be completely honest with you, Steve, like I didn't even want to do a podcast when I started doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, man. I was, I, I had a YouTube channel. I mean, I still have a YouTube channel, but I, I had been doing YouTube for two years straight, almost two years straight uh, of putting up three videos every single week by myself. And that's a lot of, there's a lot of work that goes oh, yeah. into editing videos and all that stuff. But, uh, and I was consistent with it. And I, I liked video over podcasts. I didn't like podcasts. Cause I was like, man, it's just audio video. They can see me and stuff. And I can, yeah. you know, but, uh, I was uh, going through Russell Brunson's, one of his courses, and he was talking about in one of his courses, how one of his clients was having a hard time uh, with opportunity, the opportunities were just scarce, and it was just a rough go, and then he launched his podcast, and it opened the door to all these other opportunities, and me at the time, when I heard him say that, I was like, dude, if anybody can relate to this dude's story, it's me, dude, because yeah. anytime I do, every single person I reached out to whenever I tried to collaborate Nobody wanted anything to do with me. I was the, the convict turned entrepreneur afterthought, right? Yeah. And um, I was just like, all right, dude, well, if it worked for him, I mean, might as well. Let's throw some more shit on the wall and see what sticks, you know? And uh, right, really glad that I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's say. So when you were doing the YouTube, you were just doing the video, leaving that. You weren't utilizing the audio and sending it to a podcast or anything at that time, right? Yeah, I didn't even know that you could do stuff like that at the time. I was yeah, like, yeah. One or the other, you know, but I didn't know you could just repurpose it. But yeah, I was just focused all on the YouTube, man. Wow. I didn't, I didn't know that. I remember you doing some YouTube, but I didn't realize that was two years. You yeah. know? But then it's okay. So then you decide to jump in and do the podcast and, you know, kind of tell us how that journey went and, you know, what your intention was when you started versus kind of how it's evolved and, and, you know, what it's the doors it's open, number one. And the talk about collaborations, brother, you have, some big time people on your show, you know? And uh, so that obviously changed pretty quickly because you're only talking what two, three years max since you started your podcast. Something yeah. Like just a little bit over three years ago. Um, yeah. Still fresh. Still, yeah. still, still young in the grand scheme of things when you think about it. Right. I'll say. But, uh, yeah, man, the intentions, it's still the same too. It's, it's grown and evolved, but it was, it was always, to, to it was for me first and foremost to help myself uh i can't I stand that's big right there yeah. you know, most people would never hear that or understand really what that means like what does that mean to you yeah dude like i like there's so many people like oh i'm not i'm not doing this for me i'm doing this for everybody right. I'm, like, I'm like dude you have You're to do it, it yourself first you know absolutely <laughs> but uh yeah, it was, it was, it was initially for me to, to, to break out of this 
this box that everybody was labeling me in is like someone that's never going to be successful. It was like, it was for like a springboard, right. To, to, to launch the brand. Uh, but also to create that platform for other underdog entrepreneurs to be able to come together and help grow and help them achieve their goals as well throughout the process. Now, I never, th- at this time, like I never thought I was going to be helping people with podcasting. Like I w- would have never imagined that in a thousand years. My whole thing was doing what I'm launching right now, Alpha Underdog, helping people put the whole package together, mind, body, soul, relationships, and finance. Cause it's not just about right. business, you know? Right. Um, so yeah, so that's grown and evolved since then, but uh, yeah, initially it was just a break out of that mold, you know, for myself and then create that platform for everybody else that holds similar core values. Yeah. Cause I think the mind, you know, mindset's one thing I know you're big on and uh, you know, I love what you do on Fridays and go out and I've adopted some of that just so you know, and nice. it's, it's makes a huge difference, you know, because we, we oftentimes we're so busy and so caught up in work and family and just life that we don't ever get slow down and get still and quiet enough to really let the magic of what we're created to do and become happen. And it can't happen without that. And so Talk to us a little bit about what, you know, what inspired you to do that? Or did you, you know, do you have, did you have a coach or anybody that suggested, or did you just, as you kind of learned things, is that something you just decided to do? And then tell us a little bit about what you do do for those, you know, cause I'm just hitting on the surface. Yeah, man. Uh, dude, before this year, before 2021, I, I didn't even like going outdoors. Like I didn't, I don't know why, uh, it was crazy, but, uh, I went, we, we held our own mastermind. Uh, it was uh, January, January 20th or somewhere right around there. Um, and I'm at the mastermind and here we are. And we got 10 clients that paid money to come fly across the country to come, come learn, come learn what we, you know, come jam with us. And, uh, yeah. you know, just, just, you know, five and a half years prior to this, I'm in a prison cell. So I'm like, you know, major, you know, growth since then. Right. But yeah. But I'm sitting there though, and I'm like, okay, what's next? You know, what I'm saying I'm already thinking about the next thing. And then I, I had to stop myself, like, wait a minute, dude. Like you, you literally got these people flying all over from the country and and you were just in prison a few years ago and you're already like thinking like the next thing, like you're not soaking in the moment right now. And I was like, it, I was like, it's never gonna be enough, man. You gotta you gotta stop, slow down and appreciate what you got right now. I'm not saying don't be hungry and don't drive for more. But I knew it was a problem. I knew it was always going to be the next thing, next thing, next thing. And it was that it's just a never ending cycle, right? Really with that, you know, say, yeah, dude. So that, uh, and then we left there and me and my videographer flew directly from there to go to your neck of the woods in, uh, in, uh, Utah to go interview Sean Whalen. Oh yeah. And then he's just going on, uh, during the interview and dude, I did, I resonate with his message so much because he values freedom. Like, Big time, you know, and that yeah, you know, you and me right both were attracted to that, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I'm like, basically, how I felt like I felt like throughout the entire interview, like it was amazing, kick, kick ass interview. But I just felt like he just had a mirror up the whole time, and I'm sitting there seeing how I'm not in alignment with my identity of who I am, uh, because wow. I started this business to to. To, to, to have the freedom to be in my kid's life. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, right. and here I am working 16 to 18 hour days, six to seven days a week and hardly spending any time with my kids now. And I was like, dude, what the fuck? And so I left there and I was like, dude, I'm going to go, I'm going to chop this down. I'm going to work 20 hours a week. I did that for one oh, week. Man. Yeah. I did it for one week. And then I chopped Fridays off completely and got it down to 16 hours, Monday through Thursday. And, uh, and then I took Fridays now to where I go out into the woods every single Friday. And, uh, I got introduced that through, uh, Paul, he's in our company, uh, kick oh, ass. Yeah. yeah, but he's, oh, man. A, yeah, he brought me out there when we were doing our quarterly, uh, company meeting. And, uh, I was like, dude, this is shit. And I just started going ever since. And now I'm like an avid outdoors person. <laughs> so when crazy. you go on those Fridays, I mean, you're going out by yourself and you're just kind of chilling. I, I noticed you journal and stuff. You're just kind of kind of getting quiet and letting kind of things take over and just see what happens. You know, it's kind of that, that ability. It's like, you know, we can't free our minds up to have that, those thoughts or intuition, whatever you want to call it. You know, you can even call it sometimes God speaking and, and guiding you, whatever it is, 
You know, it just doesn't happen if we don't uh, put ourselves in a place to allow it to happen. Yeah. And so, because that, because as I as I watched when you started that to the moves you made and just the way your life's changed, at least from my perspective, at least, and making a little bit of assumptions, but you know, you're pretty open about things, so I have a pretty good feel for what what's what's happened. And, you know, and you just explained it. You went from 60, 70 hour work weeks down to 15, you know, mm -hmm. that doesn't happen that easily unless you no. really implement things to allow it to. And I imagine you've learned to delegate really well. You, you focused on the team members you have and, and the quality that they bring that'll, you know, so that they can cover the things that need to be done. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad you brought this up because it, it was a, uh, it was a, it was a rough transition, you know, at first to go from that complete drastic change. But like you said, man, and one of the things that's the, the highlight or whatever you want to call it, the, the, the great um, uh, aha or whatever you want to call it. Right. Okay. But that right there of realizing that, Hey, you know, this is your team is, is everything right and so it allowed me to like like you mentioned delegate better but to just let go and not try if you're anything like me and a lot of entrepreneurs that is the hardest piece right there yeah we like to be in control and you know i've fought that my entire life and you know because that is the toughest because it's like i think i actually listened to you mention it once um i don't remember if it was on a podcast when we were talking but you know Oftentimes I've found myself not letting go because I, you know, the thought comes, well, I can just, by the time I explain it and teach how to do it, I could just do it and it's easier and it'll be done right. Uh, but I swear it was you that mentioned something like, hey, when we first started doing something, we didn't do it right. And we have to allow others to learn by, you know, making mistakes. And that's just part of the process, you know, and without being able to do that, you'll, you'll always be trying to hold control, which then means you're going to be spending the 60 hour weeks because you just won't enable others to, you know, to do what they're good at. Yeah. You don't have a business. You just got another job. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Stay stuck yeah. inside working, you know, you know, it's crazy too, man. From my experience for the short time that we've been, you know, doing this this year is that um, by doing this uh, and also uh, encouraging the team members to step up and voice their opinions and take more initiative and more ownership of stuff. Um, that's just been healthier throughout the entire organization because more people, when they get that opportunity to have their voices heard and put their input or whatever and take ownership, then they treat it more like it's their, theirs. You know what I'm saying? And they, yeah they're more tied closely to it. And we're, we're just a better off. We're, our organization is better off because of it, because we have more leaders now. And so yeah. just a bunch of people following one person, you know? Yeah. Which, which even if it might be just on a subconscious level, some of it's conscious, I'm sure. But like you said, then they feel like they're not just doing a job. It's almost like they feel like they have some ownership because they're valued so highly, you know, Amen. that's huge. Well, right on, man. So, you know, a big, big key to what you've done is, is showing guys like you and I who have that big felony that, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what our past is. It doesn't matter, you know, what others think of us. It really comes down to what we choose to do and take control and, and then get focused and do it. And that's what, you know, you've really done. But talk to us a little bit about what you've been able to do um, with people that are incarcerated. Because I don't know a ton about that, just what I've seen online. Yeah, man. Um, recently, uh, back in uh, May, man, we were uh, we were able to launch uh, the Convicted Life podcast, which uh, I co-hosted with uh, Travis. He's my partner. And, um, you know, we got it on all the platforms out, you know, in the, in the free world. But what what he was able to do with his connections that he's made, because he did some time and stuff, too. And now he's like goes in there and speaks to his programs and stuff uh, like awesome. financial literacy programs, all this cool stuff. Right. But um, he uh, has a connection with secure the 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 owners of Securus, which you know it's a system that you use to send money to people's books in prison or whatnot, and it's the wherever they call you from that's Securus or whatnot. So, anyways, we got this podcast on 115,000 devices across prisons in the U.S. Oh, and yeah. yeah, now we're getting ready to hit five more states. Are getting ready to open up Arizona. Um, 
South Dakota and uh, I can't remember right off the top of my head, but, but we're getting ready to hit those states soon. So we're going to be on many more devices. And so it's really cool because the, the mission behind that, man, you know, you know this, you went through it, man. The, the resources that are provided to us coming out of prison are garbage. They're a waste of taxpayer dollars. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't help. It's just a waste of time, honestly. Um, and so, you know, we want to, we want to help people that are, that are serious, that are convicted of living a, an extraordinary life. And so we got this podcast that we're able to reach them while they're in the inside and literally give them actionable shit. That's actually going to help them and show them how to get out of prison and end up being successful. Cause we've been there and done it too. And then we that's interview. Cool. Yeah. And then we bring people like you, we got to get you on the show too. We bring people like you that are doing, you know, different business models, but that are able to come share their path, you know, in that way, you know, some people might want to be contractors. We got a contractor that's been on and stuff. Some people might want to get in digital market, whatever, you know, we got, we got it all on the show. That's huge. Yeah. Cause even, you know, as I came out and you know, a little bit about it, you know, I had been successful and I was blessed with a decent, you know, middle-class live upbringing and stuff, but man, you went through what I went through, it messed me up mentally you know, and something like what you're talking about and having access to listen to something like that, that would have been huge. You know, as I look back, I, I read a whole bunch in prison, but, and all, but only a few books are the type looking back at the type of stuff that I really focus on and reading now, you know, to better myself and just to, to really learn different things uh, rather than novel type books, just to keep my mind occupied, you know, to pass the time and, you know, listen to something like that you know, that would have been massive value, you know, that's, that's yeah. incredible. That's great, man. Right on, dude. Sweet. Well, cool. Where, what, uh, talk a little bit about and I'll, you know, get you out of here. Cause I know you're busy, but, uh, what are some of the things that, you know, you're currently offering to help people out with and then where can we find people find y'all obviously put your information links under the show notes, but I just let everybody know kind of what are the things that you do offer right now that, you know, they could get engaged with you if they chose to. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, something that we always are uh, pushing out is uh, with uh, podcast powertrain. So we got uh, all of our courses, right? There's four different courses. They help you get your podcast launched and ranked on Apple, grow your audience, interview high level guests, and then make money from your show. Um, and it, those four cor- courses cover those five pillars right there. And we used to sell all these courses collectively for seven thousand four hundred dollars. Well, what we did giving them away lately. <laughs> yeah, pretty much giving them away now. <laughs> uh, we bundled them all together, and you get them uh, for ninety seven dollars at underdogempowerment.com slash podcasting. And if you use promo code underdog, it knocks it down to forty seven bucks. So yeah, that's if, phenomenal because I've been through that stuff and I know the value. I mean, if you just go in there and follow along, you literally couldn't fail. <laughs> right on man dude i appreciate that yeah, man it's, it's, uh we're it's excited truth, about it's the truth i'm not you know not blowing smoke up anyone's butt ass here it's just that's the fact i mean you outline it you give every the exact playbook and you know and if people just stick to it and follow along you can put it in play pretty easily because if i can anybody can <laughs> <laughs> right on dude i appreciate that man absolutely dude uh that's uh that's at uh underdogempowerment.com slash podcasting. Even if you're the person where you're like, dude, I'm busy, I'm not gonna go through the courses or whatever, because many of our clients are like that because they are running successful businesses. Uh grab it anyways and get the $197 strategy call that's on the same page. And then either myself or someone on, on our team will get on the call if you will be able to map out your next 90 days. And if you need more help, like someone producing your podcast or running advertisements for your podcast to grow it. We offer those services as well. Uh, just get the 197 call and we can figure all that out on the call. But uh, yeah, other than that, uh, if you just want to get to jamming with me, maybe come check out the Underdog Empowerment podcast or any of me on social media, go to underdogempowerment.com right there on the front page. I got the podcast there and then all my social medias are down at the bottom of the of that page. Right on. Yeah. I mean, for those that price, you can't afford not to. Like you said, even if you're running another business and you're just looking to do something and want to get something moving down the track, you know, get after it. Cause that's, that's a great price. And, you know, at least you can get started, you know, amen. So, appreciate that, my man, brother. I appreciate your time and, uh, you know, keep, keep track of what you're doing. We'll stay in touch and 
you know, just keep making a difference because you're doing a hell of a job, man. You're like I said, you're an inspiration to me. And frankly, you keep me inspired to keep going, you know, because this isn't my full time thing, uh, but it's something I do enjoy. And, and, you know, we both want to help people. That's the bottom line. So. Amen. You're an inspiration to me too, man. Thank you so much for having me on your show today, Steve. Hey, it's been my pleasure. Take care, brother. Much love. Okay.